the MSI Z97 Gaming 7. We'd heard good things about this board from MSI, so we wanted to take a peek for ourselves. My opinion on the matter is that this board is positioned as sort of an upper middle of the road board with two-way SLI support and even three-way crossfire support, but that's in a by eight by four by four configuration. Let's start by taking a look at the ports at the back. I really wish that they labeled which USB ports were provided, you know, through the hub or through Z97 or through the direct as media interface. But you know, the reality is with, unless you're using a whole bunch of USB three ports at the same time, doesn't really matter a whole lot. Although sometimes with the there's certain compatibility issues with Intel or as media, and so it's it's like, well, I should try the other USB port. So you take it out and unplug it, and you have to go through the device manager and look at devices by connection in order to figure out which uh, which uh, chipset is providing the connectivity for the device. So uh, it's not really a big deal. The red LAN jack is a killer NIC. I would have liked to see an Intel NIC as well for those that prefer Intel. Someday I think I need to set up a benchmark with an Intel to do head-to-head -head with these killer NICs to see how they really stack up. Now the CPU utilization is always a little bit higher with the killer NICs because they're sort of doing software processing, um, but I don't know if that's really deleterious to overall performance. It's not significant uh, CPU utilization overall, but it's maybe a few more percentage points higher. Now, the red audio jack is amplified by, by a TI-1652 amplifier. The front panel audio is also uh, amplified by another TI-1652 amplifier. So this setup is designed for headphone impedances up to 600 ohms. The sound chip itself is a Realtek ALC-1150. For the rest of the audio subsystem, they've isolated the audio traces, so it's a separate part of the PCB that's physically isolated from the rest of the PCB. And they've used quality Nishion capacitors, and they, they put the sound chip under a metal EMI shield. So those are things that will help improve the quality. Now, the most interesting thing that they've done with the sound solution is that they also provide the option to route power into it via an external 4-pin Molex connector. So you could actually actually power your sound card from a totally separate DC source if you want. You know, you could even power it from batteries if you were so inclined, if you believe that's going to improve your audio quality. So that was an interesting uh, feature, although I'm not really sure how I would empirically test the quality. There are also two HDMI ports for display output from the Z97 onboard video and one display port out. Let's talk about the board layout. I'm going to give MSI an A for board layout here. Even though the VRM heat sinks are pretty bulky, the large heat sinks I've tested fit fine. There's about 28 millimeters of clearance all the way around the CPU and the first slot on the board is a by one. So you've got over 60 millimeters of clearance between the first by 16 slot and the CPU. That's a good move for MSI. I mentioned that this board could do two-way SLI and three-way crossfire. The layout for this is really good. So three two-slot cards would work, although the last card will hang off the end of the motherboard, which means you have to be careful to get a case that has eight expansion slots if you're going to do that. If you're going to use SLI, you can use two or three slot cards with no problem because of the spacing here. There's also an M.2 slot that is wired for both PCIe and SATA, and it's got plenty of options for the various length M.2 cards that are out there. At the front edge of the board, they skipped SATA Express. I have to give MSI kudos for spacing out the SATA ports a little bit extra here. That really makes it a little easy, uh, a little easier to remove the cables in heavily populated configs. Now, two of these SATA ports are provided by an Asmedia ASM 1061. The other six are the six provided by the Z97 chipset. Don't use the Asmedia ASM 1061 unless the other six SATA ports are full. There are a couple more things at the front edge of the board that are worth a mention other than the eight SATA connections. That's the USB 3 connection is actually a right angle USB 3 connection, which I know a lot of you guys have been asking for. Right next to that is a switch. This is a slow switch. This is uh, a boot switch that enables an option if you're using liquid nitrogen cooling. Uh, if you use this option, it'll help prevent the system from crashing if you're going to use liquid nitrogen cooling. Then you've got two postcode readouts, and the, there's a nice table of postcodes in the manual. You've got your power connection, and then you've got a system fan connection between the, the power connection and the RAM. And then you've got these V checkpoints, so it comes with the little adapter uh, so that you can plug in a voltmeter or whatever to read out your voltages right there. And then you've got a second CPU fan connector at the top edge of the board. There are five fan headers, two for the CPU and three for the system. 
For our burn-in testing, we used Windows 8.1 on a Plexter M.2 SSD drive and Kingston HyperX RAM. More details about the benchmarking can be found in a PowerPoint at techsyndicate.com. It's also worth noting that this board has some lighting effects, some red LEDs at the back of the motherboard around the sound card, and the Northbridge heatsink with a white LED backlight. There's also surface mount LEDs uh, for the hard drive and power indicators. The hard drive LED is a blue LED and the power indicator is green. So let's take a look at the UEFI. The UEFI overview. Um, I've gone through this a little bit ahead of time, so I'm not flying totally blind here. And this is one of the more impressive UEFI biases that I've encountered. Um, it's really nice, it's really polished. Um, there are only a few minor things that I've noticed, and I'll point those out when we get to them. It's very full featured, and it's very user friendly. Um, I haven't really, I haven't really encountered anything that sort of makes me raise an eyebrow. Um, there are a few small things, but overall this is really polished. I'm really impressed by this UEFI. It's, it's one of the most user friendly that I've seen. Um, you can take a screenshot. There's some controls over here in the corner. You can set favorites. You can go online. Or no, you can, I mean you can uh, change the language. Um, you can exit. So you've got the, the six sort of main options down the side, and then you've got, you know, OC Genie. You've got the OC Genie button here as well in hardware. Um, the OC profile is pretty easy. You can load and save profiles. It's pretty standard. You can also load and save profiles from USB, which at, at this point is pretty standard on motherboards, so it's kind of nice. The help is not, uh, you know, in English, and the info is, is, is basically pretty readable, so that's really nice. Hardware monitor. This is really cool. I, thought, I think this is one of the most user-friendly fan control things that I've seen. So if you're into running alternative OS's and you don't want to load the utilities that come with the motherboard, this looks pretty cool. Now, we've seen this feature before on other Z87 and Z97 boards, but in terms of like user-friendliness inside the UEFI, this might be the best one that I've seen. Um, this makes it pretty easy for you to, you know, pick and control. And it's putting a bounding box around where I can put this because it won't let me do anything nonsensical like, uh, you know, from 40 to 45 degrees, the fan runs faster and then it slows down when the CPU gets warmer. That doesn't make any sense. So it's putting a bounding box around this square to let me, not let me get any faster than what happens when it gets warmer. So if I drag this up here like this, now my, see my bounding box has, has gotten a little larger. I think this is a really intuitive way to handle that. And you can see over here the color coding as to what that goes to. So for 50 degrees C and below it's 50%, for 55 it's 50%, when you get to 70 it's 62.5% and you can see how it ramps up there. So if I just want to do something crazy like let's move that up and let's move that one up let's move that one up. And so now I don't know if you can hear it, but the fan is starting to ramp up, and you can see it in the graph. And so you see the graph going up there, up and up and up. That's really cool. So I'm gonna, uh, I've messed this up, so I'm just gonna do set to default. So now it's restored and everything's back to normal. And you can kind of see the CPU side of things as well. And you've got that kind of control for the, the other four fans that the system supports. And you may be saying, well, where are those fan headers? I wasn't paying attention when you were talking about that earlier. Well, the Board Explorer feature of the UEFI shows you a picture of your actual motherboard with all of the connectors, the power button, what's plugged in where, so that USB header, that USB header, these front panel connectors, oh, it's like, oh, system fan disconnected, other CPU fan disconnected, disconnected with a capital C. It's only a minor, minor, minor typo. CPU socket, i7 4790K, 4.0 gigahertz. The uh, debug LED, this is really cool, it seems to show the temperature when it's booted into Windows and otherwise operating normally. The V checkpoint connector, which, you know, we talked about a little bit earlier with the uh, being able to use the uh, uh, voltmeter to read the voltages from that. We'll take a look at that in a minute. USB 3, nothing plugged in. Your SATA connections, nothing plugged in. M.2. M.2 connector. Now that's what we're actually using. We've got a plexer there, but it doesn't show that. So there's a there's a bug. That one's empty, 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 empty. Fan connector disconnected. Audio. 
that was just a placeholder. The back, you know, so nothing plugged in, empty, empty, uh-oh, that was not really empty. That one's got our PS2 keyboard plugged into it. The clear CMOS button, more USB 3, HDMI, which is the current connector we're using for video, but it doesn't really indicate that. Display port, HDMI, SPDIF, etc. Now this does actually show the link speed. We're in low power mode right now, so it's only a 10 megabit link in your your uh, other connections here. So this is kind of a cool feature. And then we've got settings, OC, and M Flash. Now I'll look at M Flash real quick. You can update the BIOS from within the BIOS, which is you know pretty standard fare these days. Just be aware that it's there. Overclocking. You got overclocking functions, OC Genie. You can go in simple or advanced mode. Advanced mode has pretty much all the features you'd look for. This video doesn't include overclocking testing or anything like that. You know, we've got our four point uh, our 4770K that can hit 4.8. We haven't tried that on this. I haven't tried the overclocking features. And if you guys have enough interest, we'll probably do that in an upcoming video. So advanced settings. Now this is looking a little more this is probably the most disappointing thing about the UEFI because what they've done here is they've just shoehorned in the old, uh, <laughs> sort of the old style UEFI into the middle here under settings and surrounded it with all the bling. So it, it, it's functional, it works. I mean, it's not, it's, it's not quite as awesome as some of the other stuff that we've seen in terms of user friendliness and things like that, but they've at least done a good job of making the explanations uh, actually make sense um, and you know saying what the default is and what these particular functions do and so enables or disables the HPET high precision event timer support you know in, in days gone by it was just enable or disable the HPET which is classic useless documentation well of course it enables the HPET but what the heck is that so that's kind of fun Windows 8 8.1 this is fun. So it's got this fast boot. You know, we talked about the switch. It also has some options here in the BIOS. You gotta have secure boot and all that kind of thing. But I don't know if you guys noticed, but this thing boots up like greased lightning. I mean, it's got a boot time of between one and two seconds, which is just completely nuts. So uh, you got some options you can set here to do with that. Power management, you know, you got the C state, C6 state power supply, smart connect, super IO. This is, this part of the UEFI is really not any different than you know even pre UEFI BIOSes. All the other settings that are, that are under here. Well, that's been the MSI Z97 Gaming Seven. Do you have one of these motherboards? How has it been? Tell us about the performance or any weird problems that you've had, or if you've had any good experiences over at TechSyndicate.com. This is Wendell, and I'll see you in the forums. Until next time. But now it's hopefully going to boot its crazy fast boot thing that it boots. Yeah, see, I didn't even have a chance to ramble there. It was just, and then there it was.